Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on controls to ensure data security. Today we're going to begin by talking about technological controls for data security, and then we're going to conclude with a brief discussion on some unique data security situations. We have a fair amount of information to go over, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and jump into this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by talking about technological controls for data security. As the lifeblood of any organization, data needs to be kept safe and secure at all times. Anytime unauthorized access to data occurs, it can be considered a data breach. A data breach may cost the organization in reputation, revenues, Fines may be levied against the organization, or they may lose trade secrets. Because of this, special emphasis is placed on controls for keeping data secure. Something to keep in mind is that data may be in one of three states. It may be in transit, as in it's going from one system to another system. It may be at rest, so that would be when it's on the storage media or it may be in use, as in it's being used in an application. In order to ensure the security and integrity of the data, technology controls should be used for all three states. One of the main technological controls used to secure data is data encryption. Whenever possible, data should be maintained in an encrypted format. Encryption ensures that even if a data breach happens, no actual loss of data occurs. Data encryption can be implemented at different places and at different levels. There is full disk encryption. All of the contents of the storage drive are encrypted. In order to access anything on the drive, the proper security keys must be input. There's also database encryption. Sensitive information contained in databases, as in customer credit card numbers or personally identifiable information, should always be kept in an encrypted format. Data encryption may occur at the individual file level. If full disk encryption is not used, then all sensitive files should be encrypted. If removable media is allowed for data storage, then there should be technological controls put in place to encrypt that data when it is on removable media. Then there is mobile device encryption. Because of their nature, all mobile devices that are allowed to contain organizational data should also implement full device encryption. Encryption can also occur at the hardware level. This is called hardware-based encryption. In most cases, hardware-based encryption will outperform software-based encryption solutions. The reason is the chipsets that are used in hardware-based encryption are optimized to perform the necessary algorithmic calculations for the encryption. There are several different types of hardware-based encryption. There is TPM, that's Trusted Platform Module. A specialized chip is used on the motherboard, which by the way, it must be supported by the BIOS, that contains the cryptographic keys and algorithms that are required to perform the encryption. TPM is very useful for performing full disk encryption on laptops. Then there's HSM, that's hardware security module. A specialized add-on card is installed into the system to perform the hardware encryption. If TPM is not possible, HSM is another option that can be utilized to perform hardware-based encryption. And finally, there's USB and portable hard drive encryption. When data is allowed onto portable media, only devices that support encryption should be used. A solution for USB flash drives is to use an iron key USB flash drive. They are encrypted by default. File and folder permissions are another type of technological control. They're a method for specifying who can access files and folders through authentication and what manipulations can be performed on the data through authorization 
once it has been accessed. Permissions are usually established through the use of a type of access control list or ACL. Data policies are not necessarily a technological control, but they can be used to help to implement technological controls. Policies, they're usually a form of administrative control, should be put in place that outline the technological controls that detail how data should be handled. The policies should outline at least the following controls. There should be storage controls. These controls, when put in place, determine where and how data may be stored, including the levels of encryption that will be required. Retention policies are controls that are put in place that determine specifically how long data must be kept and maintained and when data must be disposed of. And that moves us to the next one, which are disposal policies. These are controls that are put in place that specify how data must be disposed of. The controls cover both physical and electronic data and should specifically outline the proper disposal method for each type, as in the shredding of physical documents or the sanitation of hard drives. And that brings us to the last of the data policies that should be in place, and that is a wiping policy. These are controls put in place that specify how data on devices that are no longer in use or that are going to be repurposed must be handled. And this is usually through the use of a secure data wiping process. It's time to conclude with a brief discussion on unique data security situations. First up is the storage area network situation, or the SAN situation. Many organizations will utilize the storage area network as a method of storing and accessing data. As most SANs reside on their own networks, controls must be put in place to ensure the security of the communication channel and to keep data secure while it's in transit. There is also the cloud storage situation. Cloud storage does require some special controls in order to keep data secure. In addition to that, in some cases, it is not appropriate to store data on a third-party cloud solution. As in personally identifiable information, or PII, should never be stored outside of the organization's control. And finally, there are situations involving big data. Big data storage and transmission methods should have special controls put in place to ensure that the communication channels are secure and that sensitive data is maintained in a secure manner at all times. That concludes this session on controls to ensure data security. We began by discussing technological controls for data security, and then we concluded with a brief discussion on unique data security situations. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.